in a lot of my videos. You guys see me painting in these beautiful locations and beautiful weather. But in reality, Scotland is a lot like this. in my face, bloody hell. I've structured my schedule so that I can go outside and paint whenever the weather is good. But a lot of us don't have that luxury or maybe we're traveling, we're only in a location for two days and the weather is not necessarily in our favor. <laughs> Either rain, wind, who knows what, but we just wanna go out and paint while we have the chance. So I'm gonna show you my kit that I take out in more extreme weather and show you how I handle the situation which is a little bit different than when it's very calm and beautiful and you know you have the luxury of time on your hands. Let's start by finding a spot. When it is crazy windy like this, the goal is to find a spot with a little bit of shelter. In this case, these dunes are pretty much all I have and the tricky part about that though is sand is blowing down the dunes. Uh, so I need to find a spot that's a little bit less sandy, but still protected from the wind. This is pretty good. So when I find my spot, first thing I do is get my seat out. And in this case, it's a little foam travel seat. I love these things. To be honest, it's not wet sand, so I wouldn't mind just sitting in the sand. I'm gonna get covered in sand anyway, <laughs> so it doesn't matter too much. So typically when I choose my spot to sit in my position, it's based on what I'm painting. So I wanna be facing my subject, but when it is so gusty like this, you have to have your back to the wind. So the back, the wind is coming from directly behind me. It won't be blowing the sand in my face. It might get a little bit on my painting stuff, but whatever, deal with it. The sun isn't ideal because it is coming from the side and that makes it a little hard to see, but this is still the best situation. In terms of supplies, I keep it really small, really light, really quick to set up and break down, just in case the weather changes fast, which it often does. For sketchbooks, I keep it small. Usually this is the biggest I'll go in intense weather. The smaller, the better, because in a situation like this, I'm not sitting down to paint a masterpiece or paint anything that I'll probably be super proud of even. The whole point is to take notes. A lot of times it's just color notes or value notes. In this case, it's, it's really harsh light and I love the high key situation we have here with colors. Um, I also might, you know, take a few notes about what's happening in the ocean because it's pretty cool with the wind. So a sketchbook this size, maybe smaller, so A5 or smaller would be ideal. And you definitely want to have clips. You got to clip your pages down because I've had pages flying all over the place. I've had sketchbooks that are bigger out in the wind. They take off. <laughs> They're like a sail in the wind and they'll just go flying. For brushes, I really want to use nice brushes, whether I'm in the studio or outside. So these are my own gouache brushes, but I keep them protected in a hard case like this. They're all in there with elastic, so they won't fly away. And I can quickly grab one, close it, and throw it back in my bag, and it's well protected. And then we have the paint kit itself, which is very small, compact. There's obviously so many different palettes and setups you can use. This one that I'm about to show you is my go-to for plein air in general usually, but especially when it's intense weather, I might have to get up, pack away really fast and run. So I use a portable painter and there's a micro version of this as well, which is even more compact, but I love this one because it's all self-contained. Um, and this is my dried gouache. I have a watercolor one as well, but inside is the dried gouache and these little side 
pieces I just put on is where you would put your water. Sometimes you can hold your brushes in there as well. And I'll show you how I use that. I also have little bits and pieces in my little bag. I keep a lot of my stuff in like little bags like this and then I keep that in my big bag. <laughs> so maybe spray bottle or pens or pencils, extra paper towels. And when I'm not using it, I instantly put it away so that I don't forget it. Or again, if the weather changes quick, I might have to run away really fast. I do have another video about my most compact plein air kit, which I will link in this video in the description if you want to check that out. And that fits in my pockets. So, you know, that's another thing. You can use materials that are small enough where you can just tuck it away in your pocket as you go. The key to painting outside like this is to be nimble, to be adaptable, and get ready for changes at any second. I already have sand in my palette. <laughs> Keeps blowing all over my side. All right, so what I do is just fill one side. It fits right over my leg, so that's, I, that's convenient. And I immediately start painting. I'm not, like I said, painting a masterpiece, but I am concentrating on color notes. So maybe I want to capture a bit of the bright sand you might notice that I don't have a paper towel and that's because it is so windy that it actually dries almost instantly. And it's just a, one of the convenient sides of wind. And I'm sure a lot of people are like, why are you doing this to yourself? But honestly, I love painting in extreme weather because the light is so interesting and I learn a lot doing it. So yes, it's uncomfortable, but it's temporary. Uh-oh, I think the wind is shifting. I might have to move. Superhero painter pose. Just like the superhero landing, it's really bad for your knees. This is not ideal, but sometimes I'll sandwich my palette between my chest and my sketchbook really tightly and paint. Obviously I have my back to the wind still, or at least I try to, <laughs> and I will just do a rapid uh, color notes or sketches, whatever I'm doing. Since the light is changing so fast, and you can probably see storm clouds coming in behind me, I, I know I don't have a lot of time. So again, this is more about just, you know, experiencing a place. It's exhilarating, obviously, when you're in such intense weather. Uh, and it's hard to focus as well. So I try to balance my experience between learning from what I'm seeing and just enjoying the wildness of the place and the beauty of the place. So obviously stopping to take lots of reference photos as well helps. And then take your notes, take your photos back home, take everything you experience back home and just paint from that. Paint from the feeling you got from being there and everything else combined. It might be a once in a lifetime opportunity to paint at that place. Even if you only get a tiny sketch in, I think for me anyway, it's still worth it. I get a lot of joy from just being in a beautiful place and splashing paint around on the paper. That alone can inspire me for a long time to come. There's a lot of one-handed action going on. Um, and my painting isn't completely dry, but it's time to go. We'll take a look at what we have once we get home and maybe paint something from there, from all the memories. And when this is fresh in our mind. And then reward yourself with a delicious coffee on the way home. <laughs> Okay, we're back at home and this is really important. Before the palette dries, I need to rinse out all the sand that blew into it. If I let it dry, it is a nightmare to get out later and I, I think the same goes for watercolor. So, first thing, I'm going to... Ooh, I can hear the sand grinding when I open it. 
<laughs> I can feel the sand. I'm just using a big old brush. You can use any brush you have. And I'm gonna run water on it and kind of swirl my brush around just on the palette and the surface of the gouache. Now for the surface of the gouache. So as long as you get a little trickle of, of water on the surface, it kind of hits it and bounces off. And then I constantly dump it out and use the paper towel and just kind of go back and forth until the surface is relatively clean and the colors aren't as mixed up as when it's really wet, they're just gonna mix, it's okay. It's the core of the color is mostly dry, so it's just the surface that's mixing. So if I really wanted to, I could take a brush and wipe off all of the mixed color that I can see. But for me right now, the most important thing is getting all the sand out. And my palette is so messy all the time that I'm used to the colors mixing. That part doesn't bother me, but sand is a nightmare in your palette. You can either leave the excess water in there and let it get nice and soft, or you can just soak up all that extra water and close it up. I've stopped trying to make my palette perfectly clean because it never stays that way for long. <laughs> Ideally, you will do another sketch or painting when you get home while everything is fresh in your mind. But sometimes I don't do that. I wait until the next morning because oftentimes I get home late and I'm exhausted and I have to cook dinner and yeah, blah, blah, blah. But when it's finally time to paint, I pull out my sketchbook and observe everything I did on location. I also pour through all of my photos and videos that I took and make time to really process everything. Sometimes I'll write some favorite memories of being there or just notes about how I felt, but mostly I'm focused on thinking about what I'll do with all the information flooding through my mind on my next blank page. I think about compositions I saw that I liked. I think about colors I really liked, and usually I try to make something up out of everything. I'll use a reference photo very loosely, but mostly I try to paint from memory. It's a skill I'm trying to develop and I have been for years. And after many years of practicing that, it's getting easier. However, I like to have a reference photo just to glimpse at once in a while to remind me of maybe a special lighting effect or specific color combination. Last night on Instagram stories, I asked if anyone had any questions about painting outside in rough weather. So we're going to dive into a little Q&A. Kelsius Prime asked, clothing recommendations, for example, your fingerless gloves are a great idea. Yes, I highly recommend fingerless gloves because it allows you a little bit more dexterity than, you know, the full gloves, full fingers or mittens. However, sometimes it is just so cold and you have to have the full gloves. In that case, I usually have ones that allow me to use my phone or touch screen. They usually have like a sensitive area on the fingertips that allow that. Those are great. In Scotland, at least, it's all about layers because the weather changes so fast. I always bring a hat because I've been stuck outside in the freezing cold rain so many times without one that I just do it no matter what the weather is when I start. I feel like a lot of this is pretty obvious, but if you're coming to Scotland or anywhere similar, I really recommend a waterproof layer plus multiple layers underneath because sometimes the rain will soak through or the wind is just really frigid and it definitely gets through those layers. And then I also have a dry layer in the car ready for me because oftentimes I have a long way to drive home and it's just not worth 
riding in the car in cold, wet clothes. In the winter when I'm painting outside, I use hand warmers inside my gloves, which is also a really great strategy, usually on the back of my hands. And I also put toe warmers in my boots. Okay, Lady Methus asked, at what point do you just say F it? <laughs> also, what is the worst part about rough weather painting? Okay, there are many times when I just say F it when I'm outside because either it gets too windy or too rainy or snowy, whatever, it just gets to be too much. And usually by that point, I'm just mentally tapped out and it's, it's best that I just leave anyway. Um, but a lot of times I go out with the intention of just being outside, not to paint. I might bring my painting stuff with me and I get so inspired that I just have to do a quick sketch. For me personally, this is all about connecting more deeply with nature and experiencing really cool places. Painting is a way that allows me to do that on a very deep level. Plus, I just love painting and drawing <laughs> and I enjoy bringing you all along on that journey. Whether I use watercolor or gouache um, or just drawing, it all comes down to what do I have time for, what is the weather allowing for, and what am I in the mood for. If you've been following me for a while, you've seen that I'm constantly bouncing between drawing and watercolor and gouache, and I have phases where I pretty much only use one for a while and then I go back to using something else. So supplies change constantly. Um, Wow, I really got off topic there. The worst part about rough weather painting is that I often will end my sketch feeling defeated. So I go into it with an open mindset like, okay, I'm just going to sketch and paint and enjoy. But, you know, along the way, the weather's battering me or I'm just not doing what I hoped I would be able to do. I'm, I'm not capturing the scene as I want it to be and I let that frustration sink in. And so on top of feeling uncomfortable in the weather, I kind of put myself down for not doing a good job. So it's when I go home, I have a little downtime and then I reflect on how awesome it was to be there. I just look at my sketches as they are. They're sketches, they're notes. They're not meant to be a masterpiece. So I really try to pick myself up after that. Fisher Girl 63 asks, how do you keep paint from drying super fast? Well, it is actually ideal if the paint is drying fast if you're out in rough weather because you don't want to be out there for too long <laughs> or you want to be moving a lot to stay warm or, you know, don't get stuck anywhere in really intense weather. So like I was showing in the video earlier, out in that wind, it was ideal that it was drying my layers really fast so I could quickly move on to the next layer. Now I will mention one of the main reasons I don't use watercolor in rough weather or, you know, really humid or rainy weather is because watercolor takes forever to dry on my paper. So I've gone out plenty of times with my beautiful 100% cotton sketchbooks and my favorite Daniel Smith watercolors and I go and I do the first layer and I'm sitting there for 20, 30 minutes waiting for that layer to dry so I can move on to the next one and it's just not doing what I want it to do. And I get really frustrated. <laughs> so that's a huge reason I use gouache in rough weather. Yes, if it rains on my paper, my gouache can get all spattered and ruined, but if it's raining that hard anyway, I've already moved on. All right, T. Sees asks, how do you know when to stick with it and when to pack it in and get out of the weather? Well, that's kind of like Lady Methus's question about when do you just say F it and leave? <laughs> you know when it's too much for you. For me, I might have a, a higher tolerance to rough weather because I've been doing it so much, but you know, everyone's different. So. It depends, you know, if my paper's getting wet or if I physically can't hold on to my art supplies because they're blowing away, it's probably time to move on. And like when I'm out and I'm just doing these five, 10 minute sketches, that's more than enough in one spot at least. So it's not like I keep saying, it's not about making a masterpiece. It's all about taking notes. So try not to get into the mindset where you're going to sit down and be there for 30 minutes to an hour because that is extremely challenging in rough weather. 
Okay, Shelby Aris asks, what do you prioritize and what do you sacrifice? I prioritize experiencing the place, like really trying to soak it in, and I sacrifice a good painting, <laughs> meaning I, I know that I'm not going to be able to sit down and do my best work when it's really intense weather, but I know I can do something. I can prioritize capturing the colors, especially. I can take color notes or maybe trying a different technique with my brush, splashing it or swishing it in a certain way to capture some of that moody weather, you know, really little things that I can change with my brush strokes. So again, it's all about going out and enjoying and feeling that exhilaration in the crazy weather and somehow tying that into my sketch. The Life, Nature, and Art asks, how do you manage the tiny insects that get stuck on the painting? <laughs> well, to be honest, at least in rough weather, you're not going to have insects because they can't withstand the wind. Um, if you're out in intense heat, you might have that issue, but in that case, I wouldn't really sit there if I was being attacked by insect insects. I, it would drive me crazy. So I would just say, nope, gonna keep hiking. <laughs> and they also asked, how do you handle the sand flying everywhere and getting stuck on the painting? <laughs> well, that is a challenge for sure. And it happened to me earlier, as you saw, but I just deal with it. I just ignore it, honestly. like. If my palette fell into the sand and got completely coated, I would pack up and leave. And that has actually happened to me before. <laughs> it's a nightmare. But if it's just a little bit getting here and there, it's totally fine. It's not going to um, mess with anything too much. I can just clean my palette and my brushes and everything when I get home. And sometimes I can even sweep the sand off my painting when I'm at home. But for the most part, it just adds to the texture of it. <laughs> Next is Erica Weimeyer. Sorry if I mispronounced your last name. Uh, how do you keep focused and not let the elements bother you, especially the wind? Uh, I will say that wind is probably my least favorite weather condition, but it is so common. I mean, in Scotland, you cannot escape the wind, especially where we are in the Highlands. It's an island with fast moving weather and more often than not, we have really intense winds. So if I waited for the days without wind, I would never get outside to paint. <laughs> um, so I usually will wear headphones and a hood, which actually helps a lot, or a hat and I'll have my headphone, my, my little earbud headphones underneath there. That kind of gets rid of the powerful wind sound that's happening around me. If it's raining, I will usually hide under an umbrella or hide under some trees or something to block the rain and still be able to get a sketch in. Rain doesn't bother me at all. The only time it bothers me is if it's too heavy and I just can't sketch or even hike. So, you know, it's I'm so used to the rain and I actually love it, especially love what it does to the landscape. And usually it is accompanied by mist and just beautiful atmospheric changes. So I really look forward to the rain and I own a lot of strong umbrellas, a lot of hats, a lot of raincoats, and I'm pretty good at finding shelter when I'm outside. <laughs> um, on that note though, I think if you absolutely hate wind and rain, plein air painting in rough weather at least is probably just not for you. Uh, I always find something I love and enjoy when I'm out, even if it's intense, because I know it's not going to last forever. I'm going to go back to my warm car and then my warm studio and I'll have all of that beautiful reference to work from. Okay, next, Colleen McChesney. How do you keep your paints and paintings clean from debris if it's still damp and wet during this? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, if it's humid, it just never dries and that's a bit of a nightmare. Um, my paints, I showed you what happens when it's dirty and same thing for my paintings. If there's debris on it, either I just leave it and it is what it is, or sometimes I can sort of scrape it off or dust it off. Um, when it's wet, I just let it be. When it dries, it's a lot easier to take like leaves <laughs> out of it or um, handle some of the bigger debris. Uh, but it's not going to ruin anything. It's not going to do anything, especially because they're just sketches. 
Okay, next, Melissa Lynn asked, how do you motivate yourself to go out? That is sometimes really challenging, especially so as the temperatures drop. And sometimes my strategy is as simple as, okay, I'm gonna get all my kit together, get in the car and drive somewhere, find a view. If I absolutely have to, I can either sit in the car and paint or go out and hike see how I do and if it's absolutely frigid and terrible I can just run back to the car like I have that safe space in the back of my mind and it allows me to go out and not really fear being too wet or too cold <laughs> I have been on long hikes and I just cannot stand stopping and painting it's too cold or windy and in those cases I know that's my limit, so I just don't put myself through it. <laughs> I just keep moving <laughs> and get back to the car. So yeah, I, I guess we you just had, have to kind of know your limit. And I just know from, from experience, I can't sit inside all winter. I will be really depressed if I do that. So it's always worth going out and just trying it. Okay, and lastly, we have Art by Heather Weeks. Where do you start when you have to paint quickly for us slow pokes? <laughs> oh, I totally understand. I mean, when I first started, I painted rather slowly, um, but as soon as I started regularly going outside, at least once a week, um, more often than not, it's many times a week, and it's I've been doing that for almost five or six years now, it gets... A lot easier to paint quickly or you just develop these these strategy the the approach to it where you're just moving your brush fast you're making decisions really fast and that will really only come with practice and even when I'm in the studio I'm practicing painting rather quickly not all the time but sometimes just to train myself because a lot of it is just about making a quick decision sticking to it and moving on to the next decision and I find it really fun and challenging. Um, and when you're outside, you, you don't really have a choice. You just have to move fast. I have a whole playlist about painting outside in Scotland and the videos go back many, many years. And yes, sometimes it is beautiful, sunny, peaceful, but oftentimes it's cold and windy and maybe a bit rainy. And I hope if you get a chance to watch some of those, you'll get tips and pick up ideas along the way. But if you have any specific questions, feel free to ask them in the comments of this video. I hope you found this inspiring and I'll see you next time. Take care.